making sense of politics and the cultural divide from a different perspective. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant on News Radio 710 Keel. Hello, citizens. It's a great day in the USA, and we're glad to be with you. We're here advancing the cause of American liberty and freedom. I'm C.L. Bryant, and this is America on the Edge, where you'll not have the edge, live on the edge, you'll have the edge. Stay a while with us, because we're broadcasting from the greatest success story the world has ever known, and that is the United States of America. Along with me on this journey is my co-host, Stephen Parr. Stephen, tell the folks what we have in the lineup today. Got ah, uh, there we go. Okay, so Ciel is on the road uh, in, the, again today uh, and is live with us uh, on phone. Uh, he, we have a lot in store in the show. We're going to be talking about uh, global terror and the threats that seem to be coming from a lot of different locations, and some of those pretty close to us, Ciel. And we're also going to be talking about way back Wednesday, a new feature we have. There, there's so many scandals, so many things that have gone on. Folks, you're going to enjoy that way back Wednesday. I guarantee that. Yeah, there's just so many things that have been going on that we don't want you to forget about some of the scandals that are still active, just not necessarily on the top of mind. We also have a guest. Mike Johnson is back here in the studio with us, and it has been a big day for him. The court case that he has been shepherding through the uh, through the, the courts here in Louisiana on gay marriage had a big ruling today, and we're going to be talking about that. Glad to have Mike uh, along with us. Folks, you stay a while. We're going to have a fantastic conversation with him. Well, let's start with The Buzz. What's The Buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's The Buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's The Buzz? So Mary Landrieu has been coming under some criticism for uh, registering when she qualified for the vote to, to, to run for Senate. Uh, this last round here, she posted that her residence was actually her parents' house in New Orleans. Now, she owns a house in Washington, D.C., and, you know, they yeah, had a little bit of fun with that. You know, Senator has to move in with her parents or whatever in Louisiana. But it, it may not just be that. It may be she really more is a representative of Washington, D.C. than she is Louisiana. Very well could be, Stephen. Let me tell you something. Um, folks don't understand the type of game that she's playing. And that game is to have it both ways. She's burning the candle at both ends. And I have a feeling here in 2014, she will uh, finally uh, find her way out of office. Well, American Crossroads is trying to make that happen. And they have put out an ad that really goes after Mary Landrieu, not because she's represented Louisiana, but because she's done so much of her time representing Washington, D.C. Listen to the ad. For years, she's appreciated life on Capitol Hill. I really can appreciate the life that we live on the Hill. Secured an earmark for D.C. schools. Senator Mary Landry sponsored an unusual $2 million earmark to District of Columbia schools after receiving $30,000 in campaign contributions. Delivered funds for her neighborhood. A Capitol Hill neighbor, Senator Mary Landrieu, who did more than anybody else to help provide the funding that established this Hill Center. Earned the praise of D.C. lobbyists. She lives on Capitol Hill and is dedicated uh, lots of efforts to make Capitol Hill a better place to, to live. And the support of her mayor. Senator Landrieu, the senator representing the District of Columbia until we become the 51st state of the United States. Mary Landrieu for Washington. The District of Columbia, which is about 650,000 people, I want to speak on their behalf. I really can appreciate the life that we live on the Hill. There you go. 
That's, that's, that proves the point right there, Stephen. Yeah. That proves exactly what we were talking about, that she's trying to play both ends. And, folks, that should be very clear to you how she is perceived in Washington, D.C. She is their senator, perhaps, Stephen, more than she's ours. Well, she owns a house in Washington, D.C. She does not own property, apparently, in Louisiana. She had to register as being a tenant of her parents' house In New Orleans. Well, in France, there's been a a big to do because France is building two helicopter carriers uh, for Russia. One of them called the Vladivostok is supposed to be delivered next month. But France came out today and said they will postpone the delivery of the Vladivostok to Vladimir until after the situation is resolved with Ukraine. Another aircraft carrier, a helicopter carrier is scheduled for delivery next year. It's called the Sevastopol. Uh, but given all that's going on over in Ukraine, Francis said, you know what, we're not going to deliver that that ship right now. Well, I guess we can start trusting the French, uh, at least for now. Uh, used to be an old saying, uh, and I, I better not say that, but we better, <laughs> <laughs> we better, well, I think we're trusting the French right now, and I, I think it's a good thing. By the way, today is the 75th anniversary of Britain and France declaring war on Germany after uh, Germany uh, attacked Poland. Uh, and again, there was a time when Neville Chamberlain thought, hey, boy, we finally made peace. L- listen to a, a clip from Neville Chamberlain just before the eve of war. We regard the agreement signed last night and the Anglo-German naval agreement as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. Now, Neville Chamberlain filled their heads with hope and change, I imagine. But <laughs> Neville, Ch- <laughs> Neville Chamberlain and Barack Obama, folks, if you'll study the history of that, you'll note that his folly and our president, current president's folly are very much the same. Speaking of folly, I want to get to Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Uh, she said something uh, yesterday talking about Governor Scott Walker up in Wisconsin that really should be out of bounds. It's just Debbie Wasserman Schultz, by the way, is the head of the Democratic National uh, Committee. So she's she's pretty high up in the Democratic Party. Uh, and yesterday, or actually earlier today, she said, here's a quote, Scott Walker has given women the back of his hand. I know that is stark. I know that is direct. But that is reality. She then went on to say what Republican Tea Party extremists like Scott Walker are doing is they are grabbing us by the hair and pulling us back. CL, she's relating politics to assault on women, physical assault, spousal assault, domestic violence. You know, I I came to Debbie Wasserman Schultz's defense when Alan West, who we had on the show uh, just a couple of days ago, said that she was vile, evil, and wicked, uh, because I just don't think that maybe you should categorize women uh, in that way. I I didn't want to pull her by the hair and into the cave. Uh, But the Democrat Party, if in fact, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later on with Mike, uh, the Democrat Party has been the party that has uh, historically Uh, grabbed women by the hair and are still doing it and dragging them into the cave. It's amazing that she would defend her abusers. Yeah, and and imagine if Rince uh, Rince Priebus had said that. Imagine if that was the Republicans saying that, the outcry you would have heard on media. Yeah, oh, no doubt about it. Uh, In fact, if you and I uh, were to say something like that. Of course, you and I are the, the host of uh, America on the edge. So naturally, uh, if America's on that particular edge, we must point that out. But if Sean Hannity or even, even O'Reilly is as high and lofty as he is, had said something like that, that would be a massive outcry. Would be. There's also been an outcry for the Washington Redskins to change their name, but a new poll by ESPN says 71% of Americans, not just sports fans, but Americans, think the Washington Redskins should keep their name. See how that's leading to our question of the day. Do you think the Washington Redskins should be able to keep their name, or should we all give in to the tyranny of political correctness? You can give us a phone call, 318-320-KEEL. Send us a tweet at the American Edge. We will be right back with America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and show you some of the threats for terrorism around the world. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Keel. 
Doctors Thornton, Pugh, Olier, and Watkins from the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center are excited to tell you about a new made-for-iPhone hearing aid, Resound Links. Resound Links is the fully featured hearing aid designed to connect directly with iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Built with revolutionary technology to bring you a smarter, smaller, and more connected hearing experience. Call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888-408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. That's 888-408-6318 to schedule your appointment to learn all about Resound Links. Apple, iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch are trademarks of Apple Incorporated, registered in the U.S. and other countries. Once again, call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888 888- 888-408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. Hello, everybody. This is Henry Burns. God, faith, and freedom are not free. Many have paid the price. Let freedom ring. What a great radio program. Go get them, CL. If you're in need of a good plumber, perhaps you need work on your heater, or especially right now with cooling and refrigeration systems. If you need help, give the friendly folks at Premier a call at 222-1980. Attention women. If you or a loved one sustained a serious injury caused by transvaginal mesh, bladder mesh, pelvic sling, or bladder sling, you may be entitled to a cash award and compensation. The FDA issued a public notice to doctors and patients concerning serious injuries caused by transvaginal mesh, bladder mesh, pelvic sling, and bladder sling. Please call now if you or a loved one has had one of these devices implanted. You may be entitled to a cash award and and compensation. Time is limited. If you or a loved one's life has been affected by serious injury caused by transvaginal mesh, bladder mesh, pelvic sling, and bladder sling, you may be entitled to a cash award and compensation. Call 800-765-9197 now. Call 800-765-9197. Our toll-free phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-765-9197. That's 800-765-9197. Again, 800-765-9197. The Sentinel Group is responsible for this advertisement based out of San Diego, California. Cases may be referred to local counsel. Not valid in every state. Check with your doctor before starting or stopping any medication. We served our country like those before us. You know, it was a dangerous era. All of Vietnam was dangerous. The carnage of war left an indelible mark on me. We came back and built lives. As time went on, we faced new challenges and found support to handle them. I went to the VA, talked to my doctor. I started doing groups. I started doing one-on-one counseling. At maketheconnection.net, you can hear our stories and find tools and services available to you. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Keel. Welcome back to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryan. I'm Stephen Parr. During the break, we got a phone call on our question of the day. Question of the day is, should the Washington Redskins change their name? Or should we all be held to the tyranny of political correctness? We got a phone call from uh, our sh- our friend Chauncey in Shreveport. Chauncey, uh, Chauncey's back, huh, Stephen? Yeah, Chauncey just called back in. Uh, Come on down, Chauncey. <laughs> and, and what he said was if the Washington Redskins have to change their name, then the state of Oklahoma should have to change its name because it means, when it's translated, it means red people. You know, you're absolutely right. And how about those Florida Seminoles? Uh, See, it's a seminal example right there, CL. (laughs) Oh, Stephen, that Uh, is really – you're quick, man. uh, Well, I've been practicing all week. Uh, Okay, so we're we're now talking about the uh, threat of of terrorism. Of course, yesterday we were talking about ISIS beheading the second journalist, Steve Sotloff. Uh, they There are reports that there may be another 20 journalists that have gone missing in Syria over the last couple of years and may be held by uh, ISIS, and so that they're threatening to do more beheadings. If I'm being held, Stephen, the uh, only thing I want America to do, uh, even if it costs me my life, is to put a stop to it, uh, because they're going to kill me anyway. Right. And I think uh, that is the, uh, the perhaps the most patriotic thing to do or the most pa- patriotic approach to take. Now, that's easy for me to say because I'm not in that situation. I will admit that. But the point being is that we must bring this to an end. Yeah, my, my, I, I like to think that if I were in that situation, uh, one of my goals would to be to not become propaganda for my captors. 
Right, exactly. uh, and, and that's exactly what's happening here. It, it's, I think it's a little different if you're a prisoner of war because then you expect that they would, have, they would at least follow some of the Geneva Conventions and you could be released. But ISIS is not going to release you. Why would they do that? They're not, a, they're not a recognized army. They, they recognize no conventions, no treaties, no, no nothing. It, this, this vermin has to be exterminated. Yeah. And along those lines, England has upgraded its terror alerts to severe. Uh, this, so they, they have raised it from substantial, and they don't use colors. We had colors, you know, red, yellow, green, blue, whatever. Uh, England's threat level has been raised from substantial to, quote, severe, uh, well, let and, me ask you this question, Stephen. Um, is, is there a level that America is standing on right now? Are we standing at any threat level at this point? Has the president issued any type of um, level of um, uh, security for us as far as terrorism is concerned? We are at a threat level, but no, the president has not upgraded our threat level uh, recently uh, due for, for terrorism. He has not upgraded our threat level. So, folks, England is taking this uh, ISIS uh, ISIS uh, uh, threat much more uh, seriously than, um, than our American president is taking it, and none of their citizens have been beheaded. I don't understand. It may be because one of their citizens is the one doing the beheading, uh, Jihadi oh, John. Oh, oh, oh. You know what? You may have a point. Yeah, so that, that may be part of where that's coming from, uh, but it's certainly not the only threat that is uh, that is out there. By the way, uh, Sean Hannity last night had the leader of the uh, uh, the new conservative party the, uh, in England. This is uh, Nigel Farage, and he was on last night talking about terrorism. Take a listen. Well, the French have got an even bigger problem than we've got. Much bigger. So we've got to actually start standing up for our values. And one of the other things that's been happening y- in Britain... the Australian Prime Minister? Well, they've been very, very firm about this. Very firm. Very firm about this. You're, you you accept our way, our values, yeah. or leave. Well, that's right. And that's what we've got to start doing, and America's got to start doing it. So accept our values or leave. See, what do you think about that? Well, I think that those types of ultimatums, uh, when they're given by a tyrant, a king, or a despot, what, 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 or whoever, uh, is just simply unacceptable. And, uh, you know, the thing is, England, uh, we need this type of leadership here in this country. And certainly we, we're not seeing that same level of uh, intensity when it comes to talking about terrorism. The, the, the president certainly hasn't, hasn't been drawing red lines here recently. Tell you what, let me uh, play a little bit more of the clip with Sean Hannity and uh, the and Nigel Farage. All that's going on in Iraq at the moment and this barbarity that has apparently happened again today, uh, you know, what we must actually, our primary responsibility is to make sure it doesn't happen inside our countries and, you know, schools. The primary responsibility is what I really like, uh, what he's saying there. The primary responsibility of our commander-in-chief is to make sure that that doesn't happen. And when we look back on yesterday, when we found out, Stephen, that over a period of one year, he had been receiving these types of daily briefings on just how serious and how escalating this ISIS threat was, uh, his primary responsibility was much more attuned to going to the, the links, the golf course, than protecting us as Americans. Yeah, by his behavior, he wasn't showing what he thought his primary responsibility was. He certainly didn't show that it was uh, more of Americans rather than the the golf course. And again, his predecessor made the exact opposite decision. George W. decided after 9-11 he was not going to go golfing anymore, certainly after the invasion of, of Iraq, because he didn't want parents to see their kids dying overseas while the president was on the golf course. And you know what, Stephen, in hindsight, I know that George W. took a lot of flack for going into Iraq. But in hindsight, I would rather for him to have erred on the side of, 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 of uh, not I won't use caution, but on the side of American safety than to have actually uh, let Saddam Hussein become the threat that we thought he was. And I really think he's, he was. And, uh, but this president, on the other hand, as uh, Feinstein has said, is far too cautious. Yeah, Diane Feinstein, as we had on the show uh, yesterday. One other threat that has now developed over in Libya. Some terrorists in Libya were able to capture the airport in Tripoli. And after they captured the airport... We have discovered 11 jetliners have gone missing. These were jetliners that were owned by a Libyan airline. 
their commercial jetliners, and they're gone. We don't so know where they are. Me. You're telling me and you're telling our audience that at this point in time, right now, as we're listening to this and talking on this radio uh, show, that there are 11 jetliners that are unaccounted for, stolen from Libya, that could be headed any particular place as we approach 9-11. Piloted by Ansar al-Sharia, apparently the same people, or at least affiliated with the people who killed our ambassador and CIA agents in Benghazi. You may have forgotten about that. And we have a president, Stephen, who is being far too cautious in the face of even this. I wonder if he got a briefing on this. Probably, because the the press has gotten a briefing, so you know now that's in the papers. I'm sure he's read about it. That oh, yeah, seems he to be he claims to read the paper. Right. That is that. Now that's over across the Atlantic. Okay, you'd have to fly a plane all the way across the Atlantic. There's another report out that is more disturbing because it's a lot closer, and this from two different places, from Judicial Watch and from Breitbart. Apparently, there is concern among the military and among uh, the the homeland security, that there is a jihadi training camp in Juarez, Mexico, right across the border from El Paso. And, you know, Stephen, and I'm going to say this, folks, and, and, and please uh, accept it for what it is. I know handsome Kyle there and, and uh, 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 Janine, they're going to have a, a cow when I say this, but I say it often since Mexico loves to send their people here. This, to me, is all the more reason to go ahead and take at least the northern part. Let's, let's inhabit it so they're already here. The, the, already it, American. the issue here is that in Juarez, Mexico, there, not only do you have the drug problem going on and violent crimes there, but the uh, U.S. Army posts, Fort Bliss, has been briefed, uh, according to some sources reported by Judicial Watch, Department of Homeland Security, uh, is also apparently been uh, briefed about this, but they did not respond to reporters' inquiries. But basically they're saying that there's there's a cell there that is trying to use cars to create a, a, a car bomb attack, perhaps coming up on the anniversary of 9-11, which is coming up next week. Janine just texted me saying, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> but, folks, let me tell you something. When they, you have terrorists uh, practicing uh, detonating car bombs right across your border, something has to be done. Remember, Pershing went into Mexico uh, back in before World War I. Pershing went into Mexico because of some criminals coming across the Mexican border into the southwestern U.S. committing crimes, Pancho Villa uh, and things like that. Now, Pershing wasn't successful in it. Uh, but there is a history that the U.S. has done, had to do that in the past. They weren't successful, uh, and, and we'll just have to see if these reports coming out of Fort Bliss and other parts do play out. Coming up next, we will be talking about the latest decision from courts here in Louisiana on gay marriage. We'll be talking with Mike Johnson, the attorney at the center of it all, on the very big day today. That's coming up on America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant right after this. You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Keel. It's a summer sizzler showcase. You could win a $5,000 gift card to any Louisiana Boardwalk store, including Bass Pro Shops. Presented by the Outlets at Louisiana Boardwalk. Look online to win at 710keel.com. Have you ever thought, I wish I didn't have to search for the best price on printing or direct mail? Tired of trying to design your own material on some confusing website just to get to the end and it's not that professional look your business needs? Well, stop searching and call Graphic Industries. We've been waiting on your business, ready to help you with your printing and direct mail needs. Graphic Industries offers all types of print, stationery, brochures, flyers, catalogs, door hangers, books, pocket folders, postcards, variable printed letters, and much, much more. Graphic Industries can direct mail for you, too. You can customize a mailing list, target a certain demographic, or just flood the market and get your name in the homes of thousands of potential clients. Lowest prices, best quality, and a faster turn time. Visit us online at graphicindustries.net. Or call us today at 318-222-1100. Graphic Industries, the number one choice of printing and direct mail. 
William F. Duncan doesn't just offer auto, home, and life insurance. He does it with great personal service. William F. Duncan has covered Caddo and DeSoto parishes for over 18 years. Call him today, 318-532-4300. Tell him CL sent you. Here's a special announcement for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. Now, there's hope. The Internal Revenue Service has extraordinary programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the 911 Tax Relief Helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-549-5126. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will halt all collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Relief Helpline. 800-549-5126. 800-549-5126. That's 800-549-5126. This is Jewel and Kelly Pickler. Too many women are losing their lives to lung cancer. It's the number one cancer killer of women in our country, and we'll need a force to defeat it. So we've joined the American Lung Association's Lung Force because it's going to take all of our collective strength to fight for better early detection and more treatments and create new hope. Join the Lung Force and help save women's lives. Fight lung cancer in women at lungforce.org. Giving you the edge. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Kiel. Welcome back to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryan. I'm Stephen Parr. C.L. is on the road again, as he is uh, apt to do, traveling this wonderful country of ours. And so that left an open mic spot right here in the studio. And, uh, you know, nature abhors an open mic spot. So uh, we have filled it with attorney Mike Johnson. Mike, welcome to the studio. I am a pale comparison for the regular <laughs> occupant of this seat, but I'm glad to be here. Well, Mike, I want to welcome you, man. I also want to congratulate you. You are a defender of the faith and an attorney extraordinaire. Thank you so much for being there today. Thanks, brother. Glad to be here. Kind of a big a big day for you. The uh, There's a ruling that came down on a case that you're involved in from U.S. District Judge Martin Feldman issued a ruling today that upheld Louisiana's ban on gay marriage. Now, this is the ban that we voted for Uh, as a state uh, to our Constitution, saying that we wouldn't have to recognize gay marriages from other states. And this is uh, we've had you on the show talking about this before, but uh, I just wanted to see if you wanted to to talk about the decision today. Yeah, we've described it today in other media and interviews and stuff as seismic. And it really is, uh, guys. And and the reason is I'm, I'm looking over here at the computer screen on the ticker. USA Today just posted about 15 minutes ago. Their headline says the legal winning streak for same sex marriage is over. in in Louisiana. We argued the case back on June 25th. We've talked about we've been waiting on the the federal court decision, and it came down today, and uh, it's a big one. I mean, this is the first federal court. There have been about 72 cases filed since last summer when the U.S. Supreme Court struck down part of the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, and this is the first federal court that has ruled in favor of traditional marriage, so a big deal today. So, Mike, what's next, and what does this say about us as Louisianians? Well, we drew the line in the sand here, CL, and we said not here. You know, our citizens, everybody listening to the sound of our voice will remember back in 2004, we went to the ballot box. This is how these decisions should be decided by political consensus in the democratic process. The, the, the voters in Louisiana went to the ballot and we voted to the tune of almost 80 percent. Seventy eight percent of Louisianians said we want marriage to be one man and one woman in this state. And everyone will remember that was challenged in court after it passed at the ballot. And uh, we, we, I argued that case as well back in 2004 at the Louisiana Supreme Court. We won it unanimously, and we solidified traditional marriage in Louisiana. That, that solved it for about a decade. And then this summer, the advocates of same-sex marriage went back for another shot at the apple. They went to federal court, and they sued under the federal Constitution. Um, it's a big deal that, that our federal judge down in New Orleans, Martin Feldman, had the courage to do the right thing. It's certainly the right opinion under the law. He acted as an umpire here, C.L., and not a legislator. He did not legislate from the bench. He made the right call. We actually, we actually have a clip from uh, one of the uh, people who did sue, uh, her reaction to the court case today. 
uphill climb or not, I would think that this decision going against the number of other decisions that have come down this year uh, on the other side uh, definitely shows that I think the, the uphill is, is the, the people who are on the wrong side of history. So there's that wrong side of history complaint again, which I don't think is uh, codified in the Constitution anywhere. But uh, the concept being that, yeah, this is just one defeat, but given all the other victories, we're eventually going to lose this. It's kind of silly for the opposition to say that we're on the wrong side of history when we have 5,000 years of recorded human history that supports our argument. This is the the definition of marriage has been the same for millennia. Uh, The advent of same-sex marriage is a new idea. But, you know, I think uh, Justice Alito on the Supreme Court said it best last summer in his dissent in the federal, the Windsor case. He said same-sex marriage presents a highly emotional and important question of public policy, but not a difficult question of constitutional law. The, the law is really clear. The Constitution is very crystal clear on this issue, and, and the right result was had today. The people have the right to, design, to define marriage, not unelected federal judges, and that's what the court affirmed today. Absolutely, and I certainly do applaud your efforts in this case, Mike. Uh, you have become and, uh, and, and still are becoming one of the premier attorneys across this nation in this fight of defending the faith, as I said earlier. What other fights are in front of us now? Is the, well, let me ask you this. Is this fight really behind us? Is there an appeal process here? Oh, no, it, it will definitely be appealed, and we'll be defending it vigorously all the way up. You know, an appeal from a Louisiana federal court goes to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. That's the appellate court that covers Louisiana, Texas, and Mississippi, probably one of the most conservative appellate courts in the country, and we're grateful for that. I think they're going to uphold this well-reasoned 32-page opinion by Judge Feldman today, and that will set up what is known as a circuit split, CL. You know, when, when other appellate courts around the country come to different conclusions on the same legal question, it makes that case ripe for review by the U.S. Supreme Court. So it's very possible, I've been telling people today, that Louisiana's case could be the one that is decided. We might be arguing this at the U.S. Supreme Court to decide marriage, the future of marriage, for the entire nation. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but my understanding of this is that the people who filed the suit did so essentially under a equal protection clause, saying that you have to treat same-sex couples the same way that you would uh, everyone else under the the rules of the Constitution. Mike, why why is that not correct in your opinion? Well, the, the thing about the equal protection argument is that's a 14th Amendment argument, and they tried to equate it with, with race. I mean, the Constitution is very clear. It expressly prohibits racial discrimination. Equal protection has never been understood in the context of same-sex marriage. Uh, uh, Judge Feldman said in his opinion, look, uh, persons of all both sexes have the same right uh, to, to marriage. They can avail themselves of the state's marriage law. Ultimately, this is a federalism argument. The state gets to decide it, and that's the way it is. It amazes me sometimes, Mike, and I please uh, take this um, uh, scenario with you the next time that comes up. I've been black, of course, all my life, and I remember Shreveport when uh, the buses there in uh, the city were segregated. Now, I could get on the bus, and uh, everybody knew that I was going to go to the back of that bus back in the 60s, uh, back in 62 to 65, 68. Uh, Around 67 is when that actually stopped. And uh, But two men, two women could get on that same bus. Nobody cared if they were gay. It is not the same as being black or uh, it's not a race issue at all. That's right. And and Judge Feldman said it this way. He said, no analogy can defeat the plain reality that Louisiana's laws apply even-handedly to both genders, whether between two men or two women. And and that says it all. Another court case you've been working on is the uh, abortion ruling, a a new law from Louisiana, similar to one that was uh, passed in Texas, which essentially said that abortion clinics had to have a physician who was licensed to practice at a hospital with emergency care capabilities within 30 miles of that abortion clinic. And apparently, correct me if I'm wrong on this again, but a court ruling basically suspended that law until further hearings. Is that correct? That's right. Um, Working on that case down in Baton Rouge and federal judge uh, John DeGravel, who's a new federal judge down there, issued a ruling earlier this week to temporarily suspend the application of the law. But it's important to point out, Stephen, that uh, the merits of that law 
have not yet been decided, and we're very confident they're going to be upheld. The Fifth Circuit's already issued an opinion on point, a very similar law in Texas, and um, we're, we're delighted by that. We're going we're gonna to defend that vigorously because ultimately this is about the protection of women's health. That law is called the Unsafe Abortion Protection Act, and it's called that uh, for a reason because this is to safeguard uh, women and, and uh, protect them in this, in this horrible practice. It's important to point out, too, Shreveport, Bossier, and Metairie, are now the only abortion clinics left in the state after the law went into effect this week uh, that are still providing abortions. They're going to get to do it for another 30 days while it's temporarily suspended, and then the court's going to decide the merits, and we're going to be fighting that vigorously. And if the court decides that the, that the law stands, what happens to those three clinics? Well, if, if, if they can get admitting privileges to a local hospital, they'll be able to continue the practice. And otherwise, uh, they're going to be out of business. Uh, you know, shreveport Bossier is the abortion capital of Louisiana. Very sadly, tragically, we do more abortions here each year than New Orleans, Baton Rouge, or anywhere. If, uh, if this law goes through and they do get admitting privileges, shreveport Bossier just became ground zero in abortion in the Deep South. And uh, it's a, a dark day, uh, but something that we'll have to fight vigorously against. Are there any numbers on how many women perhaps have died because uh, they uh, did not receive the right care after an abortion? You know, CL, those numbers are hard to obtain because they're grossly underreported nationwide. I mean, I've defended uh, some women who are maimed uh, in abortion malpractice cases, and uh, they're, they're just notorious, notoriously difficult to prosecute. The abortion clinics do not uh, you know, publicize those numbers and those records, and hospitals help them bury those numbers. Uh, so we just don't know uh, accurately what the number is, but it, it, a lot of them. It's a very, very dangerous practice. Abortion proponents have claimed that it's about 1%, 1% or less. But if we're doing a million abortions per year, that's still 10,000 women in the United States that would need emergency medical care right after an abortion. Exactly right. We know that number is grossly underreported. It's a self-serving number on their part. Um, I mean, we know that from anecdotal evidence here in Louisiana, just taking witness statements. So um, don't put any reliance on that figure. But it would still seem no. to me that if the war, if there's a war on women, ignoring 10,000 women <laughs> w- would be some casualties in that war. Stephen, they're not about women. They're not about women's health. They're about the bottom line. They're trying to sell more abortions because that's what these people do. That's how they, they apply their trade. And that's where they make their money. Now, Mike, you have been making a name for yourself, obviously, in the courts here in Louisiana, and uh, things are looking very good for for the cases that you've been on. But you are also busy now trying to run for public office. I want to give you a chance to talk about that for a little bit. Oh, thanks. That, that's not why I was here. But, um, you know, there's an open seat in our, our district, House District 8, Louisiana State of Representatives. Our, our good friend uh, Jeff Thompson is stepping down. He just got elected judge without opposition. He'll step down in January, so it opens that House seat. And, you know, after a lot of prayer and deliberation, Kelly and I have decided this finally looks like it may be the time for us. So we've thrown our hat in, and we'll be running for the, the State House and, uh, you know, praying that that goes well. Mike, you will be less visible uh, on the uh, court circuit uh, if, in fact, uh, you uh, win this office. Is that right? Well, maybe not. Uh, you know, my, my work in the last few years has been defending the state of Louisiana in all these cases, and so um, I wouldn't have any conflict there if I was also a state representative. So uh, my intention is to do both, CL. And, uh, you know, I have the objective, as you guys do, to be at my highest and best use to God, and uh, that's what it's about. So we'll see where Absolutely. it goes. Absolutely. You know, and I, I really appreciate the principles and the integrity that you, uh, the way you carry yourself. And the one thing that we always look forward to in this state is someone who is a statesman, a son of Louisiana, and someone who will care about what happens to us as citizens of this state. And Mike, I got to be, let me be one of the first to wish you well. And also, I want to congratulate you because I have a feeling that there are a lot of people who are going to uh, want to help you uh, gain that seat. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that. You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryan. Our guest today has been Mike Johnson, uh, successful so far in a couple of very big cases here uh, across the state of Louisiana. There are things we don't want you to forget about crises. There are controversies, scandals that are brewing and aren't on the front pages anymore. Coming up next, way back Wednesday. We'll be right back with more America on the Edge. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr.
on News Radio 710 Keel. SB Magazine, North Louisiana's premier publication, is your source for local entertainment, home decor ideas, gardening information, fashion trends, and seasonal gift guides. Every month, we take you behind the scenes at some of Shreveport Bossier's most fun events in Ion SB. And you'll find SB Magazine everywhere. But the best way to make sure you have the most current issue is to subscribe. It's just $16 for 12 months. Call Debbie today or go to our website, SB Magazine. Mag.net. SB Magazine, the pulse of Shreveport Boat. Doctors Thornton, Pugh, Olier, and Watkins from the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center are excited to tell you about a new made for iPhone hearing aid, Resound Links. Resound Links is the fully featured hearing aid designed to connect directly with iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Built with revolutionary technology to bring you a smarter, smaller, and more connected hearing experience. Call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888-408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. That's 888-408-6318 to schedule your appointment to learn all about Resound Links. Apple, iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch are trademarks of Apple Incorporated, registered in the U.S. and other countries. Once again, call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888 888- 408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. Hello everybody, this is Henry Byrne. God, faith, and freedom are not free. Many have paid the price. Let freedom ring. What a great radio program. Go get them, CL. Is your house just not cool enough when you walk in from work? You deserve to sit in the cool and comfort of your own home after a long, hard day. Give the friendly folks at Premier a call at 222-1980. Attention women. If you or a loved one sustained a serious injury caused by transvaginal mesh, bladder mesh, pelvic sling, or bladder sling, you may be entitled to a cash award and compensation. The FDA issued a public notice to doctors and patients concerning serious injuries caused by transvaginal mesh, bladder mesh, pelvic sling, and bladder sling. Please call now if you or a loved one has had one of these devices implanted. You may be entitled to a cash award and and compensation. Time is limited. If you or a loved one's life has been affected by serious injury caused by transvaginal mesh, bladder mesh, pelvic sling, and bladder sling, you may be entitled to a cash award and compensation. Call 800-765-9197 now. Call 800-765-9197. Our toll-free phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-765-9197. That's 800-765-9197. Again, 800-765-9197. The Sentinel Group is responsible for this advertisement based out of San Diego, California. Cases may be referred to local counsel. Not valid in every state. Check with your doctor before starting or stopping any medication. You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Keel. Welcome back to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant. Our question of the day today, should the Washington Redskins be forced to change their name? Should we all be forced to live under the tyranny? Of political correctness, let us know what you think. Give us a call, 318-320-KEEL. Send us a tweet, at the American Edge. That's at the American Edge. CL, uh, since we've started this show, it seems like there's been a scandal a week, right? Oh, yeah, there's always a scandal a week with these guys. And uh, let me say something about that Washington Redskins thing, man. Leave those guys alone. Even though I don't like the Washington Redskins, I love their ability to have their freedom. Uh, frankly, I like that the Cowboys play the Redskins. I've always thought that that was cool. Yeah, the Cowboys versus the Indians. I thought that was a neat thing. But Best game of the year. Um, maybe it's just me. We have a, a new feature here on our show. Because there are so many scandals, we don't want you to forget. It's not just about Ferguson. It's not just about ISIS. There's a lot more. We don't want you to forget. That's why we started way back Wednesday. CL, have you forgotten about the national debt? Did you remember that? Yeah, you know, it, it's, 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 as often as it's talked about, all of us have forgotten that we're in deep debt these days. Deep debt. Uh, this is a, an, an article out today from the Daily Signal. The country currently is saddled with more than $17.6 trillion. So we're getting close to 18. If you round it up, we're at $18 trillion dollars. Uh, according to the debt clock, since we came back from commercial, our debt has gone up $2 million. 
just since $2 commercial. $2 since we started talking. Yes. That, and that Stephen, quick. let me ask you this now. Your, your oldest child is 13 years old. Is that right? That's right. Uh, what was the debt like uh, back in his back when he was born? When he was born, the debt was at five trillion eight hundred billion, so five point eight trillion dollars. We're now we're now up over almost eighteen. I laugh because that is actually something uh, that uh, you know you could cry about. Uh, but let me. Uh, Clinton was president then. Um, let's see, was Clinton president? He had just left office the year before. He had just left office, so George Bush was taking office with a five trillion dollar debt. Getting is close right? to six. Yeah, getting close to six. About five and a half to six. And and so over when 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 George Bush left, folks, I want you to to see this, folks. When George Bush left uh, office, what was it? Right at nine? What right in there? When George Bush left, we were at nine trillion. Yes. At nine trillion when George Bush left office. Okay, he was in office for eight years, and between George Bush, uh, for Bill Clinton to George Bush, it went up about four trillion. Uh, a little bit more than that, yes. A little bit yeah. more than four trillion. Yeah. But now, at the not the not the end of the Obama term, uh, Stephen. No. <laughs> We're still going. But, but but at the five year mark of the Obama term. What's happened here? Uh, we've gone up to seventeen point six trillion. Let me put this in another term. Think of your family's budget, right? Okay, I'm going to add to your debt, your credit card debt. Every single family that's listening to this show right now, since Obama took uh, the office, you now owe an extra sixty one thousand dollars. That's how much you and your family personally owe sixty one thousand dollars and you owe it and uh i hope that hope and change thing is for those of you who voted for this president and i know i Stephen, i know that there are a lot of people who listen to our program who voted for obama uh i hope that hope and change thing is working out for you but you need to do something different to bring about someone who can help us erase this tell you what in 2008 there was actually somebody running for office who was opposed to raising the debt i want to play a clip to, for you from the campaign of 2008 number 43 added four trillion dollars by his lonesome so that we now have over nine trillion dollars of debt that, that we are going to have to pay back thirty thousand dollars for every man woman and child that's irresponsible it's unpatriotic my God, where does that guy go? <laughs> I have no idea. I think he <laughs> left with the same guy that, that said we all worship the same uh, powerful God. I, I haven't heard from that guy in about eight years. And, and no one else has uh, either. And, and But you know what? He didn't believe that then. He knew that he was a part of an agenda. I think there's an agenda here to direct the country, and he is full throttle headed over the cliff. I've said one of the things that bothers me most about Barack Obama is that he has made me appreciate Bill Clinton. Under Bill Clinton, when he worked with the Republicans, remember those Republicans who had hijacked the government? When he worked with Newt Gingrich and the Republicans in the House and the Senate, they balanced the budget. When Bush took office, the debt was not going up. For the only time in my lifetime, the debt was not increasing. And by the way, one other note on this, CL, now, six trillion of that almost eighteen trillion, six trillion is now owned by foreign countries, mostly China and Japan. And when you're talking about six trillion, you're talking about a little bit over a third of that eighteen, nearly eighteen trillion dollar debt. China and Japan, well, I tell you what, the Chinese are definitely encroaching upon Japan, wanting to impose their will upon Japan. We have a weak leader here who very well may not defend uh, Japan, and Japan, I'm sure, has not forgotten that we, in fact, retaliated over Pearl Harbor. So here we are in this situation. We will be right back with more America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant in just a minute. Giving you the edge. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Kiel. If you're tired of getting nickel and dime for your company's marketing needs, GI Marketing Group can help. We're a new, evolved marketing company with no monthly fees or markups and with quicker response times. With GI Marketing Group, there is no outsourcing. We own the production facility. Everything from print, mail, video, digital, and web designs. We do it all in-house. Call us today at 318-222-1100 to start saving time and money. Or visit us online at gimarketinggroup.com. 
It's a Summer Sizzler Showcase. You could win a $5,000 gift card to any Louisiana Boardwalk store, including Bass Pro Shops. Presented by the Outlets at Louisiana Boardwalk. Look online to win at 710keel.com. Planet Fitness would like you to know that there's no way you're joining our gym for 75 cents. We're sorry. If you bring three quarters into our new location in Shreveport, we will politely inform you that it's impossible to join. Nothing personal, only business. Three quarters is just not enough to join our gym. However, if you bring four quarters to Planet Fitness, well, that paints a whole new picture. You see, we've got a grand opening sale going on now through September 12th where you can sign up for only $1. That's right, $1. Then you'll pay just $10 a month with no commitment. We cleverly named this promotion the $1 sale. So head to the new Planet Fitness in Shreveport across from Highland Medical Center between now and September 12th or join online at planetfitness.com. Home club only, annual membership fee applies, participating locations only. Planet Fitness facilities are independently owned and operated. Incentives offered for enrolling and other membership. See club for details. Hey guys, if you're into fantasy football, you'll want to hear this. These new one-week fantasy football leagues at FanDuel.com are the hottest thing in fantasy sports. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. And with no season-long commitment, you only play when you want. And get this, there's a 36-year-old guy in Detroit named Chris Prince who's won over 656000 dollars playing at FanDuel. Damn! And he's not alone. Over 278,000 people have already won money playing in these one-week fantasy leagues at FanDuel.com. FanDuel's so big that they're paying out $10 million every week this football season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right. For every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. But hurry, this offer expires this Friday. The only way to get up to $200 free is to go to FanDuel.com. Click the microphone in the upper right corner and use the promo code 8800. That's F-A-N-D-U-E-L dot com. Promo code 8800. Rush Limbaugh, the authority for all things right. It's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. Remember, most days I still feel like I'm 18 to 20. I mean, there's bumps in there, of course, but you look back on it on balance, it's not a thing I would change. Weekdays from 11 to 2 on News Radio 710 Kiel. This is America on the Edge with CL. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Kiel. Welcome back to America on the Edge with CL Bryant. I'm Stephen Parr. Our question of the day today is Should the Washington Redskins change their name? Should we all live under the tyranny of political correctness? And uh, we, we got a we got a comment on Facebook.com slash America on the Edge. And it's from uh, William in the, in Carrollton. He says, Cowboys, isn't Cowboys a stereotype? Somehow, it's time that we learn to understand that everything is not political. CL? Exactly. Uh, Stephen, uh, thanks so much for that uh, call from Carrollton or that, or that um, uh, multi, uh, multimedia uh, response from Carrollton. I want to tell you something. Uh, he's right. You can find fault in just about any word or any sentence that is spoken, if you want to. And so we have to stop playing these stupid games. Stephen, we've had a great time uh, here today. Man, we've covered a, a gambit of things from ISIS beheading to uh, those uh, uh, planes missing, those 11 planes uh, that are missing. And Mike Johnson was just stellar right on. Uh, he is indeed uh, one of the premier attorneys in this country and certainly a defender of the faith. And, folks, I hope you like that uh, throwback Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Way back, way back Wednesday. There we go. Way back Wednesday. <laughs> and uh, Steve, Stephen, uh, I, I really, I really like that. And um, where we talked about this debt. Uh, well, yeah, it's sixty-one thousand per household that you now owe that you didn't owe five years ago. Well, we want to thank God for the opportunity to have talked to you today, and we want to thank our men and women in uniform around the globe who protect Stephen, your right and mine to speak behind these microphones until tomorrow. This is C.L. Bryant with Stephen Parr. Bye now. To protect and defend what we believe And keep America strong And living free They see the damage and the pain 
your station for news, weather, and stimulating talk. K